I've really been liking the artwork on this TV. It's uh, like the like Google Earth images and Google supplied images. Oh yeah. On the Chromecast, right? You have a Chromecast plugged in there. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, they 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 got a nice like mix. Did did you select any of that, or is that just completely random? I selected it all. No, no, no. Oh, come on. Can you put preferences in, or is it just com is it random for everybody? I think you can put uh, preferences. Uh, maybe. Whatever. I, You're getting a nice mix. I, this is something I. Paid. I wish we can show the audience. Yeah, sorry, sorry, everybody. You're not gonna be able to see it, but every everyone knows how this works with your streaming box. They all have some wallpaper mode. Mm -hmm. um, Apple has the ones. It's actually like a drone uh, or yeah. a helicopter shot flying over top. But you and get a variety with the Chromecast. The Chromecast is like all kinds of art and stuff. Like here, here, I got something from a Brazilian artist and like cool paintings. And I think it's I, I kind of like what they're doing with the put the weather in there. Anyway, that's not what we're here for today. We're here for the news as usual. We have a uh, first story off the top. The Apple online store is currently down. Yeah. Oh. Do you well, know why? Uh, we're making updates to the store check back soon. Unknown reasons, the Apple online store is down. The outage began at 3.50 p.m. This is, you know what? This is always so funny because you have Apple, one of the most powerful companies in the world. Like, they definitely don't need to take the whole store down. <laughs> you, know no. what I'm you know what I'm saying? But it's become such it's a thing in the community that when new products are about to come out, the store goes down for however long. So it yeah. actually helps with the hype a little bit. But I'm sure at other times it just breaks and then goes down, and it's yes. really not even a big deal. But still, you're going to find yourself on 9 to 5 Mac talking about it. This is kind of exciting, though. I always like this kind of picture. Be, Be right, right back. back. Yeah. But anyways, they decided to uh, revamp their store. Oh, wow. It's a real thing. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. That is a revamp. So now you have this uh, scrollable horizontal line of products, starting with Mac, iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch. It's in order of profit margins. <laughs> 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 oh man you'll see an apple car on the <laughs> left side oh man anyway i don't know if that's true and i'm sure there's really high profit margins on accessories but maybe just overall uh, gross profit anyway mac iphone ipad apple watch airpods air tag apple tv home pod mini and accessories they don't really care about that home pod mini They're like man we can't figure this thing out still mm -hmm. and you just select from there. Now, if you scroll a little bit down, it's like they got this double scrolling style. You can scroll left or right, yeah. but you can scroll up and down. They have the cards just like the iPad yep. OS. Yeah, I see it. It, I mean, it's an update. You know, you still have your headers along the top, where you, which you can use to quickly go. No, oh, no, it, you don't. Never mind. It, yeah, it's not sticky, but no, you no, have I meant it those ones. I yeah. meant those ones on the bar. I know what you mean. Store Mac, iPad, iPhone. Uh, this is more visual and obvious. So this is the main site. This is apple.com slash store. That's where you go. Yep. Interesting. It is quite a departure. So they were doing actual work. It wasn't a sure. new product or any type of mishap, but the store was legitimately down uh -huh. in order to push the update. Um, they're also pushing their, uh, their help, their genius support. The Apple difference Choose fast, free, two-hour courier delivery. I like that. Uh -huh. And then uh, some highlights on some more accessories as you move down here. What do you think, Will? You are you have the background. Uh, you are uh, the web designer, the um, game developer, the 3D artist, the... Uh, well, hang on a second. Snowboarder slash rock climber. I do all of that, uh, yes. Uh, slash uh, uh, chicken wing connoisseur in the air fryer. That's mainly me, yeah. Uh, what I specialize in. Slash pet owner. <laughs> sure. <laughs> slash DJ at the beginning of the show. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, what do I think? I uh, Slash went to the driving range <laughs> recently. I didn't. Oh, you didn't? No, I didn't have a chance. You keep telling me you're going to go. Uh, you, yeah. never, you never go. Uh, I'm just imagining you swinging the golf club. You can't, you can't, because I feel like I'm going to get a story and then you never end up doing it. I know, it. yeah. 
I'm sorry, guys. I I will eventually. Um, so going back to what this, could have gotten your yeah. way from going to swing the golf club? Was it a lineup out there? Because it's been a really popular thing to do. Like I said, it was raining. What do you mean? It's been some nice days too. Yeah, but the days that I plan it, it's just unfortunate. Hmm. I think you're not trying hard enough here. Bro. I know. Yeah, I got it. We want you out there swinging a club in the rain <laughs> with the lightning bolt. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, that's all right. Go ahead. Nice. Let's get back Anyways. to business. All right, go ahead. I apologize. Um, for someone who just likes to peruse, not sure what they're looking for, I would say, yeah, this is a good design. It's a nice UI, really clean. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but for someone who just wants to, who knows exactly what they want, mm -hmm. um, they'll just go up here mm -hmm. and just pick it out. It's it's now, all right. Now I presume no. what will happen it's a little extra within this design is that you would have at the launch of a new product, this entire section in the center here will convert to whatever just came out. Yeah, some sort of like hero image. It, there's gonna be some heroes. Yeah. So, and you would know these type of terms from the background as well. Yeah, web design. Yeah, yeah you had a lot of heroes on there. So. <laughs> but what do you I, think? Look, I'll go, I'll go for it. I mean, it's still clean, it's still Apple. Would you shop? in this ui i might be buying things i can't yeah. make any promises i might be buying things if uh, i end up over there okay so uh it's you know it's it's simple but it's a double scroll i'm curious what happens then to the experience over here if i just go on mobile and i go to apple.com what happens there oh then i still get that big promo page Oh, mm -hmm. wait, I got to go slash store. Yeah, you got to. I got to go slash store. store. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's available. I got to go slash store. My bad. Well, I guess on mobile they have an app. Oh, yeah, it's exactly the same. Hmm. It actually makes more sense over here on a touch interface because now I'm like this. Can people see this? Yep. I'm like this, but then I'm also like this. Right. I think it's actually even better than clicking the arrow buttons. So I think this is a mobile oriented thing going on here. Yeah, you can't uh, drag with the mouse here. Yeah. You so. have to click on these Probably, probably if you had yeah. a magic trackpad, Will. Mm -hmm. you get your act together and get yourself a magic trackpad. But, oh, whatever. Congrats, Apple. Next time, hire Willie Do if you want a good website. <laughs> Thank you to Calm for sponsoring today's episode. Bring Calm to your workplace. Make the world's number one brand for mental fitness your newest employee benefit trusted by tons of different organizations uh, this is a way to make sure that uh, your employees have the tools necessary to manage their stress and presumably perform better you can see they even got master classes with the likes of lebron james on the website that mm -hmm. you can check out so it could be meditation it could be a stretch routine or it could be the master class to train your mind. Business leaders know that healthy, happy employees create successful companies no matter what industry. Calm for Business can help your employees be their best selves at work right now. Calm is offering a free well-being ebook for HR and benefit leaders and one month free after you attend a free demo when you go to calm.com slash lulater. That's right, a free ebook and one month free of service after attending a free demo. When you go to calm.com slash Lou Later, get started today. C A L M dot com slash Lou Later. Google Tensor is a five nanometer chip, and Samsung is handling production. We got some real specifics now. We were curious on the last episode. Because Google's like, we got this new Tensor. It's a big deal. We're a big deal. Pixel's a big deal. And people were like, okay, how big of a deal? What is this? Mm -hmm. What's going on here? And then you mentioned, oh, Qualcomm's stock price went down. And you were trying to determine what that meant. But then you went ranting about Ethereum for half an hour. So who even yeah, knows? Yeah, it was a fun time. Who even knows what you're up to? <laughs> Sources close to Nikkei, Nikkei Asia. Do you, how are you saying? Are you saying Nikkei or Nikkei? What are you saying? I think it's Nikkei. Let's go with it suggests that Google Tensor chipset will be built using 5 nanometer fabrication process, which is the same as the flagship Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 mobile chipset and Samsung's own Exynos 1080-2100 chips. Mm. Google did not disclose who will manufacture the Tensor chip for Pixel, but sources familiar with the matter uh, said that Samsung's going to handle production. Ooh, a little handshake, a little Google Samsung handshake. And uh, they, they make the Xenos chip, right? They, so make, they, they make chips, man. 
So they know what they're doing. They got a whole process over there. Five whole processors? Five, no, they got a whole process, a whole five nanometer. Yeah. Oh, God. God, stop it, Lou. Ew. Just die in this chair here. <laughs> I'd rather be I'd rather be thinking about uh we'll do it the driving range, actually. Yeah. Uh this is good. This is fine. This is good good news. I, mm -hmm. I think. I mean, I don't know what people expected to find out here, but and I don't know again, we don't get to see here what type of customizations took place and why. So it doesn't tell us all that much. I think a lot of people could have guessed that something like this was going on. Does it give you some relief that Samsung's or supposedly making this chip instead of Google hiring well, some other, you know, I think company? The, I think the main thing here is that it it is um, it's sharing its fabrication process with the the chip that everybody wants, which is the triple eight. So. If there was some fear, I guess, that maybe... I know Google already came out and says it's the most powerful thing we've used. So I didn't... I wasn't too concerned. But if anybody was concerned that it might be some budget-oriented thing, it's looking at this point like probably not. It's probably flagship territory. That's it's like, it's a guess. I'm putting that out there. Intel leak reveals Thunderbolt 5 could offer 80 gigabit per second USB-C ports. I'll take it. I've been on the Thunderbolt... I've been traveling on a Thunderbolt train for four generations now. I, I was a the big guy. supporter. I've been, I, listen, big Thunderbolt guy. Uh. Gen 1 Thunderbolt. I had the uh, Corning optical cables going across studios of yesteryear. It might have been, Thunder, it might have been Thunderbolt 2, actually. Uh, I'm trying to remember here. Wow, you can't even get a good picture of the history of Thunderbolt. Yeah, I know. Thunderbolt 1, I had the Corning optical cable going across the old studio and uh, some shared storage in the middle. Man, going back. Been doing this for 47 years. You didn't know that. Yeah. But then, yeah, it's continued to improve. Now we have the USB-C connector, which is amazing because it's compatible mm -hmm. with all kinds of other um, uh, devices that so you can you get double purpose out of the port yeah use a USB-C if you have the Thunderbolt capable device you plug in over there and now we're moving up to to Thunderbolt 5 and of course when you have this much throughput twice the speed of Thunderbolt 4 this means you got all kinds of displays coming out of there and all kinds of storage and peripherals in, inside of your dock. You're transferring footage. I mean, you're just doing stuff. Uh -huh. Bandwidth. Well, that's fun. You got to like that. The next line confirms that the new technology still plans to use the USB-C plugs and I'm going to change it. It's extremely good news for anyone who, who's already heavily invested in USB-C connectivity. Cables, hubs, and other devices will still have to be replaced with ones that support Thunderbolt 5. Yeah, obviously, if you want Thunderbolt 5 speeds. But it means that we're in for at least one more generation of stable, backwards-compatible plugs, which all your existing chargers, drives, and dongles will uh, still work with. Yeah. I'm very happy about this. Thunderbolt 5, man. Type-C. Hitting or the, the market. Win. Hitting the market. Sony's next-gen PSVR was reportedly detailed at a developer summit. Further confirmation of the device's improved FOV, field of view, screens, and controllers. Was this uh, was this device a hit or a miss? I I played with it for a little bit, and I was like, this is pretty cool. I was in that gangster game or whatever it was. I'm sitting there. I was like a card table or something. Oh, really? Yeah, I did. I, hey, okay. man, I messed around a little bit, and you already got the PlayStation. So you're like, all right, let's check out the PSVR, but... I, I, this is completely anecdotal. I just didn't hear a lot of people talking about it in in my life in 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 outside of the internet. Yeah, it seemed that as far as VR was concerned, it was I was hearing a lot more about some of the newer Oculus stuff mm -hmm. as opposed to the PSVR. Yeah, the PSVR never really uh, took off, but it was always there. Oh, so you're but it was always like just there was never like an iteration for it. You know, um, no improvements. It was just the same.
but uh, but see that kind of happens with peripherals for consoles because they're, it's all about like a standard have, setting a standard mm -hmm. and, and whether it's a controller that you plug into the thing or a camera or these accessories have to work backwards sure. with all the versions of that console that were released or at least they want maximum compatibility uh, but at the same time it's like you're probably not the most extreme type of VR consumer if you got a four hundred and ninety nine or three hundred and ninety nine dollar box and then a single peripheral uh -huh. compared to some of these wild setups or compared to the easy entry to something like the Oculus Quest Quest, Two. which is how much money? Uh one ninety nine. You see, what I'm, you see what I'm saying? Now, you don't need a headset and a console and everything else. Now, it's not going to be a one-to-one -one comparison here, but... Two ninety-nine. Two ninety-nine. dollars Don't get carried away, one ninety-nine. Yeah. You have one heck of a business if you're selling that for one ninety-nine. <laughs> Will? It's a good deal, still. All right, go back to the PSVR thing, though, here. Okay, the Here's next... Specs. The next-gen PSVR connects to PlayStation consoles through a single cable. No pass-through box ne necessary. Good. Mm -hmm. Headset features higher-resolution OLED displays, 2,000 by 240 by 2040 pixels per eye so a total 4k resolution that's pretty good yeah and, it is and an improved 110 degree field of view which is 10 degrees wider than psvr this gives you the greater sense of immersion obviously with the wider field of view sony reportedly plans to use flexible scaling resolution in conjunction with foviated 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 Field of view? I, I'm guessing the FOV stands for field, but what a word. In conjunction with yeah. foveated rendering enabled very... by eye tracking to allow, the, it's like a, some new age word. I don't know. Sure, Maybe yeah. it's not. I don't know. To allow the device to only render when you're actually looking at it. Ah, save on the resources. Mm -hmm. Better experience. Who cares if you're not looking at it? The overall goal being to, being to reduce the strain on the PSVR and PS5 and improve performance. Sony will also reportedly use inside-out tracking for the next-gen PSVR, and the company says the device's controllers will have adaptive triggers, haptic feedback. He says this is all stuff from the PlayStation 5 controller already. Yeah, this stuff. This stuff here. Which looks really cool. If uh, the goggles or the headset looks like this in the same style, which it probably will, It's yeah, it's not bad. You're into it. I like it. You're fully on board. Uh huh. The PSVR headset is the going to be the best VR headset. Uh, I don't know about that, but Sony won't actually launch the new PSVR until holiday 2022. Mm -hmm. But they could finalize and announce more details later this year. All right, Willie Do still using his Oculus stuff. Yeah. Tesla now has more than 1.25 million pre-orders for the Cybertruck. This is a moment where I guess I'm supposed to clap for Tesla, but then also wonder how they are going to deliver 1.25 million pre-orders. It's coming out soon. And where my order sits <laughs> inside of the 1.25 well, yeah. million. Well, you ordered it early. Did I? Like Did how? You? I don't know how. I, I, if you have 1.25 million, how many people were doing the same thing as me because they just took a hundred dollars or something? Like, anybody could have done that. Yeah. Well, there was a significant chunk of people who pre-ordered uh, on that day. And then it just kind of uh, tail end. But even My now, it's goodness. just getting, like, a lot of orders as well. Last week alone, Tesla has received more than 17,000 orders for Cybertruck, bringing the total to more than 1.25 million, with only months remaining until the start of production. That means that around 250,000 pre-orders have been placed since May 2021 when the reservation spreadsheet exceeded the 1 million mark. According to data coming from an online reservation tracker created by fans, the Tesla Cybertruck has unofficially racked up over 1.2 million pre-orders so far. Should they materialize into firm orders, Tesla would pocket a whopping 79 billion, 79 billies in revenue. Yeah, I mean, I, I got to think that's a fairly significant leap to turn your $100 reservation For sure, yeah. into a full-out order. But how many people are going to actually buy it? That, that's what I'm saying. It, know, it is, what's the percentage? But is it, They're going to make you feel special when they do it, right? They're going to say, uh. they're going to say, 
uh, your reservation has now turned into an order. Aren't you so excited? And we're just going to need another thousand dollars now. Like yeah. they're not going to ask for everything. Uh-huh. They're going to slowly ease you it's into a slow it. Drip. Exactly. And then people are going to be like, man, I'm so lucky. I got my name got called. I can't wait to send you a thousand dollars. This is so feels so great right now. Yeah. Unsurprisingly, such a high number of orders would also make the Cybertruck the leader of the electric pickup truck segment. However, some rivals have amassed impressive reservation figures as well. Ford's F-150 Lightning, for example, has reached 120,000 pre-orders only two and a half months after its unveiling. I got to tell you something, Will, and I told you this in the past. I'll probably tell you it again. In the real world, when I'm out there, when I'm out there moving around, moving about inside of society and so forth. Yeah. A lot of people ask me about the Lightning. More people than are mentioning Cybertruck. I think among certain demographics, the Cybertruck just might be a little too much for them. Mm-hmm. That type of statement. But they, they look at the F-150 Lightning, and so I, I don't know what it means. Obviously, there's still far more pre... Oh, I like that you pointed that out. The, the F-150's on site. Yeah. Busy building the factory to build the Cybertruck. You see, the F-150s do get work done. Mm-hmm. But the Cybertruck is the sci-fi. I mean, it's the fun mobile, so. It's fun. I understand the million orders. B is for builds. Off-road Lamborghini Hurricane named the Jumpakin. Oh, that's kind of like Ken Block used to do stuff like that. He said his, he used to be partnered up with Hoonigan, and they would do, mm. they would do these uh, ama- I mean, really, truly amazing type of vehicles. That's where I'm, the vibe I'm getting here. Yes. But let's check the video a little bit here. This is, uh, you got to go out to this location every time as well. Yeah. If you're going to do these things. I believe this is near yeah. Vegas. Is it? Oh, I thought it's it was. for the race, the Mint 400. Oh. And they have this uh, dirt race, I think almost every year. In, in year. Uh, Las Vegas? Yeah, around oh. uh, Las Vegas. On the outskirts there in Nevada? Mm-hmm. Yep. Nevada? So they outfitted a, well, they took out a lot of the things from a hurricane. They did, and yeah. Just, uh, it's like a cage left over. And... Created like a Mad Max style uh, dune buggy in a way. Yeah, built for the Mint 400 Desert Race in Las Vegas. The jump again was created by... Chris Steinbacher and his team at B is for Build to race the Mint 400 annual American off-road race that takes place for two days on a punishing 400-mile race course in the deserts of Las Vegas, Nevada. All types of vehicles from sedans and motorcycles to RVs and tanks Mm -hmm. have made the journey, but never a Lamborghini for obvious reasons. You're in the middle of the desert here. However, that all changes with this particular vehicle because I guess technically it's still a Lamborghini, yeah, uh, but it's starting to look more like a Batmobile, like that Tumbler thing uh-huh. at this point. But it's pretty cool. Very low. Man. Look at this thing go. That looks like a time. It looks like a time to be had right there. Uh huh. I feel even a guy like you could have a time in that. I think it beats the driving range. Well, I think so. You just gotta head out to Nevada, get yourself in this. Uh, what do they call it? Four hundred. The, the mid four hundred. My goodness, look at that. Oh my God, on the front tires, my goodness. Well, they love it. They built it. Look at all the dust and sand. They love it, Well, They're having a blast. You live for stuff like this, don't you? Yeah. Wow. Can't hate on that. Cool. I'll take that over a Cybertruck, actually. Ooh, look at this. Polestar Precept praised for aesthetics and sustainable solutions. Is that real? Is Is that a production car that has the doors open like that? Uh, yeah. A production is. car? This is going into production. The precept. I'm, I got, I'm pointing at you right now. Oh, yeah. I can buy that right now? Not now. It's in production. I can order it right now? <laughs> uh, soon. I can give soon. them $100 and get one in 20 oh, yeah. years? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, this is just a walkthrough of this, um, concept car that, came into production yeah shout out this, this, this channel so cool. I, i've watched this channel before uh, auto Trader. oh it's auto trader's channel oh okay <laughs> do you know the guy yeah if, does he have his own channel or is he only ever on auto trader because i feel I'm like i sure. watched a few of his videos before um will i can buy this will don't don't screw me up on this so this was a concept yes. that will be in production but it's not going to be like this when i buy it they said it's very close 
Well, very, very close. With the doors and everything. Well, how close? <laughs> well, I don't know. Can I buy this, Will? <laughs> Okay, like I said. Sc- scroll down. Let's see. But look how cool this uh, it is. It looks amazing. It looks amazing. Oh, I have to trade, I have to trade my tie can right now. Oh. Is it fast? The Polestar Precept. So they don't have any uh, um, range or mile or charge or anything like that. They're still working on it. Where is this? Where did he make this video? I want to see this car. Where do I got to go? Um, not in Canada. That's all I can say. Where do I got to go? I think I'm allowed to fly now. Um Tell me where I got to go. Come on, Volvo. Come on, Polestar. Where do I got to go? But yeah, this is a good walkthrough of all the, the things. In in the interior, they um, it's kind of like carpeted. And what they did was they took recycled plastics yeah. um, and knitted it in a form where... Yeah, of course they, they did. Well, they cleaned it up. And yeah, it's in the interior of yeah, this. Yeah, because you got the whole Sweden really thing cool going part. on. Obviously, you're doing uh-huh, this. Yeah. There's the plastics, like the netting and stuff. Obviously, you're doing this. Oh, man. This looks really cool. Easy. How much do you think this will be? It's <laughs> <laughs> it's in production. <laughs> if it if it comes out actually like this, yeah. it's got to be it's got to be in the 150 plus. Oh. Uh-huh. But I don't, again, I, man, it never gets delivered the way they show it off. So what they... In this particular video, they also said that um, maybe a hundred, maybe they 100? can, maybe they can do it for hundred. But will they have different models? Like, was there like an R model, like a fast model? Not what they said, but they. I think it's just this car, the Precept. That's it. It's one one way to take it. Yeah. No, no trim, no different trims, or maybe you can customize it. Maybe. Okay, scroll down. Let's see what it says over here. Okay, fine. Come on, man. Polestar already has one of the very uh, has one very desirable EV in its lineup. Yeah, the Polestar Two is what I saw. Yes. Yeah, uh, they're making cars. This is a more luxurious, battery-powered model. The manufacturer has previewed this new model with the Precept concept. Well, those who have seen it in person say it could be the world's best-looking electric vehicle. It sure seems that way in the video. Oh, yeah. I, I do want to see it though. Said it qualities are up for debate. Its title is the best looking. It's certainly disputed with a few others. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. It's got a 122-inch uh, wheelbase designed for maximum aero efficiency. And they've employed innovative solutions to make it more sustainable. You already talked about this stuff. Mm-hmm. Using recycled bottles and Adidas is doing something. That's all we got. Wow, we do not have a lot of information here. So we have to watch. We, you just watch the video. It's eight and a half minutes. Uh, it's titled The Most Beautiful Electric Car. You got the portrait. I know uh, Polestar in the past has worked with Google for the Android interface, so you're going to have all this stuff you want. Oh, he shows a Taycan. Taycan don't Taycan look pretty That's good no still. Joke. I think they use some sort of like, uh, you know, Google Solly tech where they have like the distance with like gestures. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So in this uh, touch screen, they want to have it clean as possible when you're driving, but if you have your hand close to it, it would show all the UI elements. Nice. So, yeah, it's really cool. I I know that uh, they've been embracing the Google stuff, these guys. Mm. So that's promising because obviously from a software perspective, the idea of getting in there and not even needing to connect any device, but just having all your stuff there. Right. All your apps, all your podcasts you listen to, uh, your YouTube music and everything's just right in there. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's a car that looks like that, and the doors open like that. Well, you made the promise. Well, you better live up to it now. Oh well, yeah, I'm you said get, I can order that. I'm get a few exact, of these. You said I can order that exact <laughs> concept. You did. People gonna run the tape back. Yeah. Well, good luck, Polestar. Um, make it through and get this into our studio. Yeah. That's it. We'll give you a hundred dollars. All right, last one for now. Japan's national volleyball team has a secret weapon. A blocking robot. Did you see this? No, I didn't. I love <laughs> it, though. I love cool. it already. This is very cool. Oh, my God. That's terrifying. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. They obviously use, like, sensors and cameras to detect. Cool. But they have the hands. They yeah, because hands. If, if, if you always had to have some other team over there blocking everything, mm. uh, first of all... That's going to be annoying for the team that only has to block for the drills. Second of all, it's going to, I mean, you can get pegged a lot. Uh-huh. 
Uh, third of all, these things are faster and you can probably play at a level where you probably turn up the difficulty rating. Yes. To improve your skills beyond what even humans are capable of creating for defense. It's just like a wall of hands. It is hilarious that they that they are actually hands. Yeah. Like, did they actually have to be hands? Yeah. I guess. And floppy hands. I guess. I guess. Yeah, they like had they a, flip a kind and of flop all over the like place. a human arm. Well, you know something, Will? You show me this uh, training weapon here, and it, it, it actually reminds me of another robotic athlete that I saw. Maybe it was around the Olympics, the one that shoots half-court shots. Oh, yeah. Did you see the basketball player robot? Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We saw that it back in the day. first episode. Oh, my God. I saw yeah. somebody posted on Twitter again, but you're right. We talked about that like years ago at this point. Yeah, the first or second episode. We're 300. Later. We are 300 years old, so mm -hmm. uh, we've seen it all, talked about it all. Uh, I can't wait for the concept car. Uh, Will says it's a guarantee. I only need to give them a hundred dollars. They'll give me a car in 2037. Except it's gonna. It's going to look exactly like it, though. <laughs> no, it's just going to be a Hot Wheels. <laughs> it, it's going to show up in the mail. Here you go. They're like, thanks for your hundred bucks. Yeah. See you later.